Welcome back. It's uh, Day of the Hippo back with you for day two. I know that we did miss last morning. It would be yesterday morning, I guess, Tuesday. Uh, we're going to jump right back here in on Wednesday. We're over to Matthew chapter two. If you are reading along with us or just kind of watching as I read, we're trying to work our way through the New Testament this year. Uh, at this rate, I don't think we'll make it. However, we're going to take our best swing. We're in Matthew chapter 2. Last week we talked about uh, Mary and Joseph and the angel and all the things that were involved with that. Here we are to chapter 2. It starts off like this. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus had been born in Bethlehem, Judea, wise men from the east, they came to Jerusalem asking, Where is this child who was born King of the Jews? We observed his star when it was rising and have come to pay him homage. When the king Herod heard this, of course, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and the scribes and all the people, he inquired of them, where is this Messiah? What, you know, where, where was he to be born, that is? They, they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. Now, of course, we're going to uh, then quote the prophet so we know exactly what we're talking about. It says, in you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who was to shepherd my people Israel. Herod, of course, secretly called for these wise men and learned of the exact time in which this star was going to appear. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go search diligently for the child. When you found him, bring him to me um, so that I can uh, pay homage. And when the they heard the king, they set out there ahead of him. When the star went to see it rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. Uh, when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, knelt down, paid homage. Then opening the treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left on their own um, country by another road. A couple quick things there. One is that we oftentimes think of the wise men being there um, at the manger. Clearly, this is not the case. They're at the house. Uh, if you take into traveling times and distances and things like that, uh, Christ at this point probably would have been a toddler. That's number one. Uh, and so all those Christmas cards you've ever received are factually inaccurate. Uh, the second thing uh, that I think is important to realize is this idea that gold, frankincense, and myrrh were the, you know, the presents that were given uh, to the family, um, to Christ himself. And I think it's important to realize that that had a more to do with God saying, yeah, this is, you know, my son and I'm going to pay to take care of him. Uh, Mary and Joseph are not going to have to struggle for those things. Um, he's my responsibility. And I, th I think so often we feel like Mary was kind of put on through this uh, whole process. But God does step in here um, and come up with the money to say, now nah, we're going to take care of our own. I completely understand that. I love that. <clears throat> so anyway, they knew um, that Herod was up to some shenanigans. So they went ahead and split another way. So here we go over to verse 13. Now, when they left, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joe in a dream and said, Get up, take the child to his mom, and flee to Egypt. Remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for this child and destroy him. Herod, of course, doesn't want a new king coming in for obvious reasons. So he is uh, seeking to destroy <clears throat> so you guys need to get out of there. Joseph got up. He took the child and his mom. By night, they went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. And to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet out of Egypt, I've called my son. See, there's another bit of prophecy that is being uh, fulfilled because not only did it have to be Judah, not only did it have to be of the kingly line and the priestly line, but also had to come out of Egypt somehow. So all those things had to happen. Uh, so here's one more that's getting ticked off the list. When Herod saw that he'd been tricked, verse 16, uh, by the wise men, he was infuriated, as you can probably imagine. And he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under. Uh, you know, according 
to that time they learned from the wise men then and it was fulfilled would have been spoken through the prophet jeremiah a voice was heard in ramah wailing and loud lamentation rachel weeping for her children she refused to be consoled because they are no more when herod died an angel of the lord suddenly appeared in a dream to joe in egypt and said get up take the child and his mom go to the land of israel <clears throat> for those who were seeking the child's life are dead then joseph got up he took the child and his mother and went to the land of israel but when he heard that Achilles was ruling over Judea in a place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, you can imagine. After being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He was to be called a Nazarene. I love that, right? Uh, so we find out that Christ is to be of three different places, two different tribes, and here God has made sure that all that came to fruition so that his mandates, his prophecies would come full circle. And uh, here we have one more example of that. So I'm gonna ask you guys real quick, um, if you are listening in, if uh, you're having any trouble hearing, I felt like maybe there was a bit. Yeah, see, now you hear that. There was a bit of problem with my filters. I'm going to try. Yeah, let's try that today. Maybe give you just a little bit more juice. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into prayer. And then we do have um, another fabulous 60s science fiction film for you today. Let's pray together. Lord God. We thank you. We praise you. We lift you up. It is great to be one of your people. And as we read through a passage like this and we see all the hoops that you jumped through to make sure that your prophecy was fulfilled, that everything you've said was going to be absolutely true. We can really appreciate what that means. God, help us to see you clearly this week. Help us to live in such a way that we receive continued blessing not because of who we are but because we're willing to follow willing to jump through those hoops like joe and mary here god i pray for everybody who was uh, listening at home everybody who's following along who's reading with us and praying with us god i pray a blessing upon their lives a hedge of protection around them physically emotionally and spiritually pray all these things in the name of jesus because you done told us we should amen <laughs> <laughs>